This lovely creature is everyone's favorite amphibious fish, the mud skipper. And today I decided to make him low poly. Let's get started. When I start any new model, I like to basically sketch the model out in 3D. And what I mean by that is I'm basically making the simplest, quickest version of the model that I can that lets me visualize the basic shapes of the animal. And it's extra helpful because it lets me plan ahead for any problem areas. Uh, the body is simple enough for a mud skipper. They're very tube shaped. They're just kind of a little tapered tube. Um, the eyes, however, are another story. Uh, you can see in the references that their eyes are situated right on top of their heads and are perfectly spherical. Um, spherical eyes aren't a problem for my models necessarily. I always like to use UV spheres for the eyes anyway, but the mud skipper's eyes present special challenges. Usually I just kind of stick the eyes right onto the sides of the model and they just kind of look glued on to the animal. Um, but mud skippers have this very defined structure on top of their heads that needs to actually house the eyes within. So figuring out how to create that structure for their round little eyes uh, was definitely going to be the most difficult part of the model from the start. And the way I kind of try to block out that shape here early on, it doesn't work out, but it at least gave me the foresight of, okay, I'm going to probably need to model this eye structure first because it's going to be the most complex. It's probably the most, com yeah, I would say it's the most complicated shape on this actual model. So when I have something like the mud skipper here, where there's this very, you know, nuanced, rounded, odd kind of shape on top of the head and then the rest of the body is really really simple i like to start by modeling that complicated shape first and then i'll kind of build out the rest of the model from there of course that's not what i did when i'm sketching here but when i really start the model in the next step that'll usually always be my approach the next challenge that came up for the mud skipper in this 3d sketching stage was their pectoral fins um the pectoral fins are the fins on the side of the body near the head and the challenge for the pectoral fins is that they're kind of twisty shaped um just like smoothly curved surfaces twisty shapes don't always translate well <laughs> into low poly models um, a mud skipper's pectoral fins come out from the sides of their body so that they're perpendicular to the ground but the bottom of the fin is more parallel to the ground actually so that they can kind of grip the earth when they need to move they slide themselves forward um, like you can see here they're so cute there's no shortage of like adorable mud skipper video clips like the way they blink is so cute the way they move is so cute their jumps are so cute they're just wonderful they're perfect creatures this is my initial attempt at modeling my mud skipper <laughs> has no dorsal fins no tail fin lots of work to do now, to build a better mud skipper, we must revisit those eye structures. My instinct was to use a cylinder since these eye sockets need to house spherical eyes, but I felt like I needed to simplify even more, so I started over again with a cube and I was actually really pleased with how easily the shape came together. To create the actual eye socket, I just inset that outermost face and just brought it inward a little bit, and it worked out really well. The eye structure was a slightly too blocky for my liking though, I ju it just really contrasted with the shape of the eyeballs, so I did add two more loop cuts to just round everything out a little bit more. For my model's eyes, I pretty much only ever use one solid dark color, but for mud skippers, it felt very crucial that you could tell that their eyes are pointing in fully opposite directions, so I went ahead and added a little bit of yellow to give the impression of an iris. And I usually also limit the eyes to just that one solid dark color because the eyes are perfectly round and they're pretty much stuck onto a totally flat plane. And since they don't have an eye socket, when I add an iris to that spherical eye that's stuck onto a flat plane, it could just look a little uncanny, um, like this version of my shoe bill model. <laughs> but I do want to experiment more with giving my models more dedicated eye sockets so I can be a bit more expressive with the eyes in the future. 
Once I got the eye structure looking the way that I liked it and attached the eyes to the mudskipper's body, I needed to work on the overall head shape more. I don't know why the shape of a mudskipper's head felt so incomprehensible while I was working on the beginning of this model. It's simply round. It's simply a round shape, but for whatever reason, it was just not computing at the time. Something about like the position of the mouth and how it was kind of protruding outward, it just wasn't make it, it wasn't making any sense to me. Uh, so I used an overlay that I find really, really helpful. It's called Mesh Analysis, and you can see here it highlights different faces in different colors if they're non-planar, which just sort of means that that specific face isn't flat or level with itself. Um, that always helps me visualize my problem areas a lot more clearly. Um, mesh Analysis overlay is also really handy for cleaning up the outlines I use on my models. Um, if a face on the model isn't actually flat, then the outline will generate a lot of seemingly random, weird extra lines over that face, and it makes the model look really messy, so fixing those planes makes everything much, much easier. Okay, quick checkup with a reference photo. The body definitely needed to be a bit longer. I also decided to go ahead and like rotate the head upward and off the ground a little bit. Mudskippers often hold themselves propped up off the ground with their pectoral fins. Um, this is an artistic decision I will immediately reverse when I begin rigging, but it was fun while it lasted. I also started over on the pectoral fins at this point. Um, I decided to just simplify them as much as possible. Um, instead of worrying about how they're twisty in real life, I just focused on modeling what I think they look like without being too strict about looking at actual references. And I think that's like the opposite of general art advice, but I love to overthink shapes like this, so simply choosing to shut my brain off here. While I was over here working on the pectoral fins, I decided to go ahead and model the pelvic fins. So mudskippers are, of course, endlessly fascinating creatures, and I was completely amazed to learn that they have this little pair of fins on the underside of their body between their pectoral fins. Different species of mudskippers will have either a fused or unfused pelvic fins. I went with unfused for this model because I think the shape is like more easy to comprehend as a fin for, you know, someone looking at the model, I think. Like, I didn't even know that they had that fin before I started working on the model, so I think, I don't know, the unfused one just looks, I don't it looks like a, a rock or something that it's just kind of sitting on, so we went with the unfused version. Um, before I forget, actually, so the pelvic fin, when I was modeling the pelvic fins, um, that was a place where Sketchfab really came in handy for me. Sometimes you can find 3D scans of preserved animal species on there, and there actually are a ton of mudskipper specimens that you can look at in 3D. Um, it was difficult to understand how the pelvic fins were actually shaped just from looking at photo references or even videos, but being able to look at a scan being able to look at a 3D scan really helped me understand how the fins are actually shaped and everything. Not an ad read for Sketchfab or anything, but it's really helpful when you're modeling um, animals and stuff if you can find uh, 3D scans on there. So the last part of really making the main model here was just working on the two dorsal fins. They have two lovely dorsal fins along their back, and then right as you can see what I'm making right now, the tail fin or caudal fin. Um, this, the tail fin was, <laughs> like the fins were pretty easy since they're mostly all just separate pieces of mesh that I'm just kind of grafting on, but the tail fin was just a little bit different because like the tail fin or caudal fin, like it's so, like it's part of the way the the actual shape of the body like tapers toward the end, if that makes sense. So it didn't really work out to make it um, a separate a separate mesh like the rest of the fins. So it's part of the model. At 
this point, the base model is pretty much done, but there were a few things I still wanted to refine, mostly the fins. So you can see here, I'm just kind of extruding out and then scaling down the tips of the pectoral fins. I just wanted them to have a more like cartoonish kind of rounded look. Um, in reality, the, the tips of the pectoral fins for a mudskipper and for a lot of fish, um, they're kind of like jagged, sort of, like you can see here. Um, I didn't go for that look. There's always a fine line between being true to what the animal looks like in real life versus what level of detail becomes uncanny, and the jagged ends of the hands is uncanny, so I didn't do that. Um, for the dorsal fins here, you can see that I am adding more loop cuts so I can actually get that more angular, um, just a bit more of a dynamic shape for the two dorsal fins. And that works fine for the dorsal fins, but it doesn't work for the pectoral fins. And I think that's because the pectoral fins, you know, they're kind of like, I think they're kind of what we think of as equivalent to you know, human arms and hands, and when I try to make the, pe the tips of the pectoral fins be more jagged and angular, they start to look too much like hands, and it all becomes very scary looking, so I didn't do that. I experimented with the shape of the mouth a little bit here. I couldn't decide if I wanted the mouth to be like really little and surprised looking or really big and surprised looking. <laughs> Overall, I made my mudskipper's mouth a really, really simple shape. In reality, they have these fish-like kind of mouths, which does make sense since mudskippers are fish, but they have these kind of fishy mouths that can open really, really wide. And I knew for this model, I really just wanted to animate either a walk cycle or a skipping animation. So modeling a functional mouth wasn't really much of a priority. At this point, I'm just about ready to UV unwrap then texture paint, but I knew I'd be turning this Mudskipper model into stickers and paper crafts for Sneep Snorp Club next, and I've learned the hard way so many times that it is not fun to fully texture paint a model, try to print the stickers, then realize that the color palette prints like garbage. So <laughs> now, uh, before I UV unwrap or texture paint my models, I like to make a really simple flat version of the model that I can quickly texture paint and that lets me print test different color palettes with minimum time wasted if the colors do not work out. Um, this is of course great for testing your colors before committing to the whole texture paint, but I also find it very helpful for just getting something painted without getting bogged down in detail work. Texture painting gets harder when you're actually painting on the 3D model, so when I kind of sketch out the texture on a flat plane like this, it lets me focus on just texturing without having to worry about a whole extra third dimension. <laughs> and here you can behold my army of flat mud skipper print test palettes. Now that I can rest assured that my chosen colors will print well, I can start UV unwrapping. So UV unwrapping for this model was pretty simple. The most detail I knew I would need to paint onto my mud skipper were really the sort of stripes they have and the spots they have along the sides and top of the body, plus a little bit of detail on the fins. The fins were already pretty much flat except for this tail fin or caudal fin. It had I had to do a little bit of adjusting the actual geometry there just because it, it's just an odd kind of shape, I don't know. But the dorsal fins were super easy to unwrap because they're pretty much already flat surfaces, so they're very easy to texture paint on. Not a lot to think about when I'm um, marking seams and adding them to the UV map and stuff. I just want to make sure they're large enough to they're large enough to where I can paint on them and the brush strokes won't get super pixelated or anything like that. So the species of mudskipper that I'm actually basing my model on is the wonderful Atlantic mudskipper. You can see here that they actually are kind of a green and yellow color, like more yellow, kind of on the underside of the body. You can see on their cheeks and on the sides of their bodies, they have those beautiful uh, light blue spots along the body. Um, it's interesting to me that mudskippers 
they do have like more of a green fishy kind of color but I definitely decided to just go with a mostly brown color palette. I think it's just because like you hear the name Mud Skipper and you think of mud. In my mind like they should be muddy and brown so I went with more of a cartoony kind of take on the colors for this animal but I think it worked out well. One of my favorite things that I learned about mud skippers while I was working on this model is not only are they semi-aquatic fish that can of course swim and swim super fast by the way they can swim so quickly it's almost concerning but anyway they can swim they can scoot around on the land as much as they please they can also climb trees one of the most jarring like random statements that I've read in a Wikipedia article about an animal I'm working on like I was just completely unprepared for the sentence well mud skippers can climb by the way they're in the trees and I think it's because like when I read that I just imagine a mud skipper like at the top of a pine tree or something but what it really means is that mud skippers they'll kind of climb up onto the roots of um, like mangrove trees. They'll climb up onto mangrove roots that stick up out of the water or up onto rocks to sunbathe, basically. Um, but I really like the idea of a mud skipper climbing, just like climbing a tree like we would, just like going all the way to the top and just, I don't know, hanging out, I guess. I have nothing really to say about this part of the texture painting, um, so I'm going to show you a Mudskipper territorial defense call video that, I don't know, I think I'd been looking for b-roll for too long at this point, but when I saw it, it was really, really funny. I don't know, the way he vibrates and then teleports away is extremely funny to me. <laughs> Texture painting all of the dorsal fins and the caudal fins were pretty simple. Um, painting the pectoral fins was a little bit more difficult, really only because the UV unwrapping was a little bit messy um, on the edges of the fins. You can kind of see there, and I think the same thing happens on the pelvic fins as well. Like on the edges of the fins, that section, originally when I was arranging the UV map, uh, I think those edge pieces they're kind of off on their own and they're super tiny because originally I was I figured they would just be one solid color. I didn't think they would have anything painted on them, so they're super low resolution anything that I paint on that area. Um, but I figure it's so tiny and so not a focal point, I decided not to worry about it very much. And here is my finished Mud skipper model. I'm really happy with how the texture painting turned out and the model is really finished, but what would a mud skipper model be without their iconic skip? So now it's time for animation time. Okay, so one of my big goals for this year was to make just like a basic rig and at least one animation for every animal model that I made and Mud skippers, fortunately, do so many cute things. It's very easy to want to animate a little model like this. Of course, they have their jumping, and I think I said toward the beginning of the video, like when I was originally modeling the pectoral fins and everything, I was having a hard time conceptualizing the shape of the pectoral fins because I was originally planning to do a little walking animation. Like, I guess it's not walking, but like the way that they scoot around on land. We'll call it walking. Um, yeah, their little like walking motion is really cute. I don't know what you call this, but this little <laughs> face rubbing thing that they do is really cute. Um, yeah, they're the type of animal that you really want to animate because they're just so funny. Um, the rig, of course, is super simple. My favorite. Um, once I got the rig done, really automatic weight painting pretty much did a perfectly fine job as usual with these models. Um, all of the cleanup that I had to do was really just for the fins or anything that wasn't actually part of the actual base mesh of the mud skipper's body. Um, and that's really just because Blender gets a little bit confused about, you know, kind of like how to assign weights to extra objects that are controlled by the same rig, but not necessarily... <laughs> 
not necessarily a lot of s sounds in that one huh uh not necessarily connected to the main mesh Fortunately, it's really easy to fix these problems. I like to just go into edit mode and I select all the vertices that I actually want to paint. So then when I go into weight painting mode, I can just turn on masking so I don't accidentally add influence to random parts of the body where I don't want to change the weight painting. I only change the weights for the selected vertices. Okay, so you can see here there's some vertices um, that aren't weighted and that basically means like when I was doing the weight painting earlier there's just one or two points where there wasn't any influence assigned um, so there's no bone controlling the movement of like one or two vertices on the bottom of the mudskipper's body that you could see when I kind of pulled the whole model up there were just two jagged points staying um, where the model originally was also very easy to fix you just have to go back into weight painting mode or you can adjust vertex weights starting the animation process i'm really just keyframing by vibes right now that's pretty much always my approach to animation um i didn't have like a very detailed plan for this jumping animation i could see from videos of mudskippers that they'll kind of like curl their body to one side and you know they kind of curl to the side to heave themselves up <laughs> and so they kind of curl to one side and they'll kind of reverse that shape to the other side while they're in midair kind of and that's basically that was basically my plan and then okay minor parenting catastrophe here it's fine <laughs> I decided to go back into edit mode to add really just a couple extra bones to my armature here. I added a control bone, which is just that big bone that you can see just kind of hanging out beneath the actual model. Um, I added that so I could just have an easy way to control the actual height of the jump once I got to it in the animation process. And then I also added a second bone in each of the two pectoral fins because I thought it'd be really cute if in his jumping animation like when the mud skipper gets to the peak of the jump i thought it'd be really cute if he just kind of like flapped his little pectoral fins kind of frantically like he's trying to get some extra lift or something like a little bird trying to get a little bit higher um when they're flying or something but my animation skills are not quite there yet um so that move like, like that tight that kind of a small movement like that it just wasn't quite quite readable yet um, when I did try to add that into the animation, so it is not in the final project, but the thought was there. <laughs> Once I got all the extra bones added to the armature and weight painted, I restarted the animation completely. I'll be honest, I do not know why I did that, because I recreate the exact same animation here, so not really sure what the thought process was there if any, um, but the original plan for the animation was for the mud skipper to just kind of hop into the air and then I also thought it would be cute if they looked around real quick after the hop to see like if anybody had maybe witnessed their magnificent leap um, and both of those things were pretty much they were really simple to animate I think especially once I added the control bone for the actual vertical height of the jump and then looking around just one little head bone very simple um, and once I got that basic animation animation done. I also thought it would be really fun if I added some blinking. Mudskippers of course have like such a unique sort of eye blink where they lower their eyes down into the dermal cups that are located just below their actual eyes. So it looks like their eyes are just kind of disappearing down into their head. It's very cool. It's very iconic for mudskippers. So I thought it would be a fun thing to add into the animation, but it just it just turned out to be a little bit too much. Um, the way I set up the model, there's just not going to be a great way to lower the eye like that um, with the way I set up this eye structure. Like you can kind of see it the way the eye is moving. Like I have one bone to kind of control each of the two eye structures because I like I think when mudskippers blink, they do kind of blink their eyes. They lower them sort of at the same time but they don't they also don't move like exactly together i'm not sure if they can move like blink one eye completely independently of the other or not but when you watch them 
one definitely moves a bit before the other, so I figured I'd have these two eye bones to control each eye, and I thought it would be really funny if they just like blinked very, very separately. Um, but the thing is, like the way I set up the eye, the actual like geometry of the eyes, it just there wasn't going to be a way that the mesh could form easily to go down like that and I think like if I really wanted to have this blinking animation for this mudskipper model I think what you probably could do is just select all of the vertices of the eye and eye structure I think you could just select all those vertices and just separate it from the body mesh and just move them as independent objects and I think it would look probably pretty much fine since there aren't any shadows on this model. I learned about using the graph editor for this animation a little bit, and I was kind of shocked. It made a huge difference in my animation with just a tiny adjustment. Um, my problem with the animation, like it was pretty much done at this point, but it just I, it looked kind of weird because the mud skipper had, I think, just like a constant rate of motion throughout the entire jump, which doesn't look very natural. Um, there's not really any sense of gravity to the actual movement, so slightly adjusting the Z location of that control bone that I added in the graph editor made a world of difference. Um, I made that little adjustment for each of the um, each of the little jumps that occur throughout this animation, like he jumps one time, and then he kind of looks around, and then he does it again, and then he goes way up, and I just made that little graph editor adjustment for each of those jumps, and it just made the whole thing look so much more natural. I have to learn more about it in the future, it was really great. So at that point, I was really happy with the animation, and then I thought one more thing, one more cute little detail I could add. Um, I just added, I just made a shape key where the mouth gets really big, and I thought it would be funny if like the jump where, the last jump where he jumps so high he goes out of frame, it would just be funny if, you know, his mouth was just like, if he was just completely blown away by how high he went. So just added a little bit of extra detail with a little shape key there. And now, Presenting the final animation! Look at him go! <laughs> you probably thought that this was the end of the video, and that I was done making low poly mudskippers, but consider that. The last step for a lot of my models is actually making an even lower poly version of that final model that you saw, and that's so I can actually turn my models into paper crafts that I make for Sneep Snorp Club. I don't want to rehash the whole modeling process or anything, obviously. Um, it's always interesting just making the paper craft models because it's like doing a retopology of my model, but even lower poly. <laughs> just like with the original model, the eyes were the most challenging aspect for my paper mud skipper, but now I had to be even more sparing with the details. So most of my paper crafts are very angular and they have defined folds, but you can technically make curved or sphere spherical surfaces um, like a perfectly round eye if needed, um, like this tangerine and frog that I made as paper craft patterns last year. Um, so you can make like a perfectly round eye for a paper mud skipper like I tried to do here, um, but the trade-off is that those rounded surfaces for a paper craft can be very tedious to assemble if they're really small, and I try to limit my club paper craft patterns to ideally only like two or three sheets of paper since they're printed with color ink, so the patterns have to be relatively small, meaning that the eye pieces would be pretty tiny and therefore almost completely impossible to fold if they were completely rounded and spherical. You can see I did try using a decimate modifier to just reduce the geometry of those eyes as much as possible while retaining that relatively round shape, but even then the eyes would be so small on the paper craft it would just be really difficult to fold this, so I actually modeled these eyes pretty much the same way that I made the eyes for this Anomalocaris paper craft that I made a while back. Um, they're just square eyes that they're very easy to fold, and I thought it wouldn't work initially because Mudskipper's eyes are just so 
round and stuck right on the top of their head, but it actually translated really well to paper craft. You probably thought, surely we can't go any lower poly for a mud skipper. But consider! I make a paper craft for Sneep Snorp Club every month, but roughly every other month or so I like to also make an extra mini paper craft just for funsies, and I thought it would be fun if this one could be in an actual jumping position. I'm trying to make paper crafts with more interesting poses. They're more difficult to actually model and assemble and everything when they're asymmetrical like this, but I think they just look really cool. So for the mini, I posed my actual original mud skipper model the way that I wanted the paper craft to look, and then I just added trusty old default cube to my scene and just kind of traced over my model that way. Another like extra low poly retopology. The eyes on the mini are another example of how much you have to pare things down when you're making one of these smaller paper craft models. So already with the bigger paper craft that I designed, the eyes were already a big challenge themselves. So now in a pattern that's going to be even smaller where there's just not enough there's just not enough paper to be able to make these actual individual eye structures. You have to kind of figure out, okay, well, how can I just kind of represent the actual, the silhouette or the profile with as little <laughs> actual geometry as possible. So for this model, I just extruded upward over the head to create just kind of a little triangular sort of shape on the very top of the head where you'd expect to see a mud skipper with their elevated eyes. And I just painted the eyes right onto those sides of that sort of triangular top of the head. And I think it actually worked out really well. And the biggest challenge for designing this mini paper craft, I think were actually the fins. I really didn't expect it. Um, but yeah, they definitely, I, it took a lot of thinking. So they're like, the fins were easy enough to actually design. I can just take the fins from the original model and reduce them to one flat plane. But since these fins are going to be glued on to the outside of the model, I'll need to texture paint the actual flaps that would normally be white and wouldn't have any texture on them and would just be glued to the inside of the model. I'll have to actually texture paint them um, since they'll be, again, on the outside of the model. So I need to be able to extrude the flaps myself and figure out where they'll actually fit onto the model. And with a completely planar, asymmetrical model, this can be really difficult. Um, it's only so challenging because everything is off-center and not aligned to any actual axis that you would move or scale along. So eventually I found a good tutorial for how to reorient objects that are at a weird angle in Blender and it helped a lot and will hopefully make this process a lot easier for asymmetrical models like this in the future. And here are all the low poly mud skippers I made. Thank you so much for watching the video and an extra big thank you to members of Sneep Snorp Club for making this video and everything else I do possible. Sneep Snorp Club is like a Patreon, but it's run through my own website. We do monthly paper crafts, stickers, live streams, behind the scenes content, and all kinds of fun stuff over there. If you'd like to check it out or support the channel, the link is below and you can join for as little as $1 a month. Oh, the next video will be about Maid Wolves. Bye!